What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrunsky here. In today's video, I want to do a complete breakdown of a character that's taken a huge step forward because of Sun of Charms. And no, it's not the Blizzard Sorceress. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole of, again, taking a side of whether or not the Blizzard Sorceress is OP. Today's video, I'm going to be doing a complete breakdown of the Fire Druid. I'm going to go through quite a few segments, including a frequently asked question segment. I'm going to discuss some gameplay, skill tree, gear, and again, I will show off some sort of different techniques in playing this character because I think a lot of people get funneled into thinking they have to use Molten Boulder Volcano in succession with every other skill, which I'm going to kind of demonstrate in today's video that I personally think you don't need to actually do that to have a very powerful fire droid. So again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. That being said, let's jump in. So I want to first kick off this video by covering some of the frequently asked questions that I get all the time about this fire droid when I'm playing with it on stream. The first major question is what is the best weapon of choice? Heart of the Oak versus a Fire Facet Crystal Sword. And this really depends on where you're farming and how big a player groups you typically play with. If you're mostly doing solo P1, maybe up to P3, and you'd like to farm areas that sort of benefit a fire druid, like maybe the stony tombs or cows, Art of the Oak is a better weapon choice in my opinion. I mean, three doll skills, 40 faster cast rate, 30 to 40 all res, is gonna be a better complement for an overall all around PVM fire druid. And with that being said, if you're doing like players eight chaos runs, or you wanna do substantial damage in players eight bail runs, you're targeting all locations which include fire sunder monsters that have very high fire res. A fire faster crystal sword is going to be better for overall damage. But again, there is caveats to this setup because you are losing faster cast rate. You're losing res that you're going to have to make up elsewhere. So it's kind of give and take. Do you want a better overall setup with a little bit less damage? Or do you want to tele stomp everything and destroy it, whether it's a fire sunder monster or it's just a regular monster? It really depends. But I personally actually prefer the fire faster crystal sword. And again, more on that when we touch on this druid's gear. Frequently asked question and number two, what is a better druid pelt for a fire druid? Raven lore or flickering flame? Again, this depends on how crazy of a flickering flame base you find. If we're talking a plain antler pelt versus raven lore, I definitely think raven lore is the better choice. The three to elemental skills, the negative fire res and all res is going to better suit you for pure damage, especially if you don't quite have some of the insane required rune words to really excel with this build. Like if you don't have an infinity mercenary, you don't have a fire faceted crystal sword. I think that higher portion of negative fire res on raven lore is going to suit you a little bit better early on. Now, with that being said, if you find a crazy Druid Pelt that's maybe like 3 to Armageddon and 3 to Fisher, and you roll Flicker and Flame, you get a high negative Fire Res roll, that is arguably a better overall choice because of the Resist Fire Aura, the reduced Poison Length, negative Fire Res, just the plus skills, the damage. It is a very solid rumored. So again, depending on the base, I think you can rock either one. But for pure damage, the highest possible negative Fire Res Raven Lore with the Fire Facet will be your ultimate choice, which is actually what this build is currently using. Frequently asked question number three is what is the best use or rotation of skills? Now I've had this debate with other Druid players on stream as well as other Diablo 2 related forums. And there's really kind of two thoughts. One is using every single skill. So Armageddon then cycling in Volcano, Fisher, Molten Boulder and Firestorm. And the other play style, which I actually advocate for and I think is more effective is just using Armageddon Fisher and Firestorm and tele stomping monster packs and slinging firestorm like you would with the wind druid slinging tornado you can try out either play style i find that one is a little bit easier to play at a high rate of gameplay for longer and that is just the tele stomp method i mean it's very simple you have armageddon active you cast fisher where you're tele stomping tele stomp sling firestorm you have a mercenary which i actually like to use the plague mercenary so tele stomping and having monsters hit you you're more likely to get that negative or res proc I just find it to be a better play style versus trying to sort of like cast Fisher in one location, Volcano in another location, and cycle between a Molten Boulder and Firestorm while you have Armageddon active. Like one is a lot easier to play and I actually think it's a lot more effective, but I'll show off my style of gameplay when I get to the gameplay portion of this video. And the final frequently asked question is what is a better mercenary setup to use with the Fire Druid, the Act 2 Infinity Mercenary or the Act 5 Plague Mercenary? Now, this is obviously subjective, but I think the Act 5 Plague Mercenary is a lot better, and I'm going to explain why. First off, Plague is a lot cheaper. Cham, Shale, Um, compared to Burmal, Burist. You get a Cleansing Aura, which is going to consistently remove curses. This is especially important when I talked about the gameplay style of Tele Stomping Monsters. If you have Amp Damage or Decrep or Lower Res, that curse is instantly gone. And then in addition to that, the Lower Res proc goes off relatively frequently with Tele Stomps. Not quite as consistent as a Conviction Aura, but it goes off enough and you get... I believe level 12 lower res is negative 56 against a non sunder monster and negative 12 against a sunder monster. Now, if you compare that to Burmal Burist, obviously a lot more expensive to roll infinity on Act 2 Mercenary, and you do get that consistent negative 86 on non fire sunder monsters, but it's only negative 17 against a fire sunder monster. So you kind of have to weigh the pros and the cons. You get a more consistent aura and a little bit more negative res, 
versus the Cleansing Aura support and a semi-frequent, very similar lower res curse that provides very similar negative res. I definitely think the Plague Mercenary is better. Again, that's my opinion. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree, but there's definitely pros and cons, but they're both very viable with this build setup. So as far as the skill tree goes, starting off with the elemental skill tree, very straightforward. You're basically just going to take a straight shot from Firestorm all the way down to Armageddon. So put 20 yard points into Firestorm, 20 yard points in Molten Boulder, 20 yard points into Fissure, 20 yard points in Volcano, and then 20 yard points in Armageddon. Now this setup has over 11,000 Armageddon damage, 5,500 Fissure damage, and then 8,000 Fire damage per second with Firestorm. So it's very solid damage compared to, let's say, a typical traditional Wind Druid. Now as far as the shapeshifting skill tree goes, you don't invest a single point in the skill tree. There is no beneficial skill point for a shapeshifter for at least a pure fire damage druid setup. And then as far as summoning goes, I just put one art point into Raven, summon Spirit Wolf, Oak Sage, summon Dire Wolf, and then summon Grizzly. So summon Grizzly acts as a tank for when you Tele Stomp, and then Oak Sage is just for that additional plus life support. As you continue to level past 94, you'll have a fully synergized fire tree. At that point, you can continue to invest points into Oak Sage to get more plus life. So this fire druid has two different gear setups, depending on if I want to shoot for the 99 FCR breakpoint to get faster teleporting, or if I want to maximize my full extent of my fire damage. So the pure fire damage setup, I pair this fire facet crystal sword. So I have six negative five plus five fire facets paired with a BK ring. That's how I basically maximize my damage. Now if I want to get the 99 FCR breakpoint and teleport quicker, so say I want to get down to bail very quickly, I just do a quick weapon swap. So I switch out the sword and the ring, for a Suicide Branch and a 10 FCR ring. So this effectively jumps me from having 40 FCR to 99 FCR, which is very important. Again, if you want to cover distances like a Terrorize Zone that has very widespread monsters, it's much easier to run a higher FCR breakpoint. But if I want pure damage in the Chaos Sanctuary, the Fire Facet Sword is definitely a lot better. So jumping back to my pure damage setup, again, the Fire Facet Crystal Sword. I have a Fire Faceted Raven Lore, a 2-5 Druid Caster Amulet with Quad Res, Enigma, Phoenix, Alder's Boots, two BK Rings, Arachnid's Mesh, and Mage Fist. And on the offhand, I have CT and Spirit. As far as the inventory goes, I have a Druid Torch, an Anti Charm, different assorted Lightning Res Small Charms, a Fire Sunner Charm, and then different Druid Elemental Skillers. And what's interesting is if you look at my Druid's resistances here, I have zero Fire Res, which is pretty punishing if you farm in Chaos, one Cold Res, one Poison Res, and then 80 Lightning Res. That's we can agree is pretty brutal and punishing if you're farming like Chaos Sanctuary. But if I actually go into the world of Diablo, you'll see that my res jumps up to 85 fire, which is just insane. And how do I actually achieve that? Well, I do that using very unique mercenary gear. So I'm using a Frenzy Act 5 Barbarian that I am dual wielding Plague. So I have two Plague rune words here, Cham Shell Um, or 20% chance to cast level 12 lower res when struck dual wielding them. So I have effectively more chance of procking lower res. Then I paired that with the body armor Chains of Honor. Now you might ask, why didn't you use Fortitude? Well, I wanted a source of life leech so I could use a different helmet, but I also wanted to keep this mercenary's defense as low as possible because if he has a very high defense, he's less likely to be hit, which is less likely to proc lower res. So it's kind of counterintuitive. So that's why I went with Chains of Honor. But then the helmet, I am using Flickering Flame. This might seem stupid, I rolled it in an ethereal barbarian helmet, but it grants me a level 8 resist fire aura, which again, like I showed you, pumps me up from 0 to 85 fire res. So that's a full breakdown of the gear, guys. So now we'll jump into some gameplay where I'll demonstrate Chaos Sanctuary and a couple other random locations and show you how effective this fire druid actually is. So why don't we start off with the Chaos Sanctuary run, running an area that you typically could never run with the fire druid before the introduction of Sunder Charm. A quick buff up, cast my two spirits, get Armageddon active. So we'll jump straight to Chaos, and I kind of want to show off the Tele Stomp gameplay a little bit. So find a cluster of monsters, I cast Fisher, I Tele Stomp directly, and then I just spam Firestorm. Like a typical Wind Druid, I just kind of move from monster to monster and keep casting Firestorm. Again, I feel like that is a much more effective approach to playing this build. And it is cycling multiple monster spells. So again, teleport, cast Firestorm. That's it. Tele Stomp, Fisher, cast Firestorm, and Armageddon just rains down doing tons of damage. Because remember, every time you Tele Stomp a monster, and you cast Firestorm, you're effectively doing 8,000 fire damage per second. 
So again, I think it's just so cool that with the changes they made to a Fire Druid in patch 2.4, and now like Sunner Charms and just being able to break Fire Immunities, you can go anywhere and run anywhere with the Fire Druid. So again, this isn't player's one difficulty, but you can see that I have absolutely no issues. Now, it's not quite like a Hammered In or Blizzard Sorceress or Nova Sorceress per se. The damage is a little bit more sporadic because you're kind of tele stomping and then you're waiting for Armageddon to rain down. But just completely, like, I have no issues at all with this build. Straight, direct tele stomp. All these guys absorb all the fire damage. You take no fire damage with this build, by the way. But the fire absorb that you get from Phoenix, and then having 80% fire resistance, like, you don't take any fire damage with this setup. It's impossible. It's literally impossible to die from fire. Mercenary has really good survivability. Haven't had too many lower resistance procs yet. That's because it doesn't quite it doesn't go off en enough on players one difficulty. But once you get to higher difficulty, when the monsters don't kind of like instantly fall over, see there is a lower res proc. Like it does go off, just not quite as consistently as you would want to. But you'll definitely notice on higher difficulty settings with a lot stronger monsters that don't instantly die to the damage that I have, they'll die, or the lower res proc will go off a lot more consistently. Again, firestorm, Tele Stomp Diablo. That's it. Okay, so that was it, player's one difficulty. We'll see if I can quickly join a public game here. Uh, I guess I'll join this one. Hell, Act 1, Start. So this is a player's seven game, and I'll do an Eldritch and Shank to just show you the build does work pretty effectively on higher difficulty settings. Again, Firestorm, Tele Stomp. Or sorry, Fissure, Tele Stomp, Firestorm. Same thing. Fissure, Tele Stomp, Firestorm. Eviction Aura, Tele Stomp, not a big deal. So I just, I genuinely find this Tele Stomp gameplay style to be just, again, like it's like Fissure, Tele Stomp, Firestorm. You just saw lower res went off. That is just so much better, in my opinion, than casting, like, Fissure, Volcano, Slinging Molten Boulder. Like, I just, I feel like they're unneeded skills that you don't really necessarily need to take advantage of as a Fire Drib. Anyways, guys, that basically wraps up today's video. Again, I wanted to cover frequently asked questions, a breakdown of the skill tree, the damage set that I had, the different uh, weapon swaps that I used for faster breakpoints. Just kind of basically break down the Fire Druid in general. Let me know in the comment section below what's the next build you guys would like to see me kind of build up on ladder. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could throw a like on it, that'd be awesome. And I'll catch you guys on my next video or live stream. Peace out.